Hello and welcome to the fourth installment in our Spectre V2 build series. This episode is going to be all about the tail. I'm going to start with the tail push rod and then we'll get into uh, the tail case and then eventually putting the tail rotor together, putting all that assembly together, getting it attached to the boom and getting it ready to just slide into our uh, main fuselage section of the heli that's looking pretty complete uh, behind me here. Um, so. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to go ahead and uh, get the tail push rod going first. Um, I've gone ahead already and sanded, uh, like it says in the manual, the first 12 millimeters of either end of the push rod. Uh, I just used a rough, like, 80 grit uh, sanding block, like a soft one. Uh, under this, I did wear uh, a mask, a uh, dust mask, because you don't want to breathe uh, this in. And then, you know, wore some gloves as well to just uh, keep the dust off of your hands. You don't want to breathe that stuff either. It's nasty and not good for you. So. Got this done. Uh, I've also got a couple of equal parts of epoxy right here. I'm just going to stir these together here. I just use one of the parts bags. What to use to glue this stuff on. I'm using Bob Smith Industries 30 minute epoxy. Uh, this is one of those areas where everybody likes something slightly different. Some folks like uh, epoxy, some folks like JB Weld, some folks use CA. Honestly, I don't care for CA. I feel like it cracks and gets dry and uh, fails, so I don't recommend CA. Some guys swear by it. Um, so this is one of those personal preference areas. I like epoxy; it just works for me. But uh, I'd recommend epoxy or JB Weld. All right, first thing we need to do is take a uh, two millimeter driver, and then we're going to take this uh, uh, two and a half by I think it's six or eight. I'm not sure it's in the manual, but anyway, uh, screw, and we're going to slide it into this sort of uh, aluminum bushing that makes up the end of the push rod. Now, here's something that's important. I want to get red Loctite on here because honestly, I'm sure this part probably comes with a replacement push rod. And what I don't want to have to do um, is, you, I mean, essentially once this is epoxy, I can't get to this. So if it starts to spin loose or get funky, I can't get to it. So I want to permanently bond it. But because the end of this screw is going to go into a plastic piece, we don't want Loctite encountering plastic, we have to be really careful with how we apply the red Loctite. So here's how I do that. I've got some red Loctite right here. I'm going to take the tip of my awl and then I'm just going to use that to get the Loctite in. Kind of swish it around in here and that'll do a good job. And then once I get the bolt through here, I'll clean the threads of what's out before we thread it in. Now, am I going above and beyond? Maybe. A little bit of Loctite on the threads probably won't hurt the plastic, but you know, it's a tail push rod. If this thing screws up, we're in trouble. And you're going to screw this all the way in until it bottoms out. Take a paper towel here and clean off the threads. You can see there's a bunch of gook on there. So we got the red Loctite is still inside this aluminum part, so that's not going anywhere. And we're going to do the same thing for the other end now. So we've got our two push rod ends and we've got our epoxy. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and stir again. I'm actually going to switch to the other end. Now yeah, we'll use this end. That's fine. That'll work. All right. And I'm just going to put a healthy dab of epoxy all over the end of the push rod here. Make sure it's got a nice coating. A lot of this will pushed away and I'm going to put a little dab right on the end here. Make sure there's a good glob there. Okay. And then we're going to take our push rod end here and just slide it over. And I'm probably going to work it back and forth a little bit here. And then maybe even add just a little more. Go and then put it back on. Now we get a little bit extra here, so I'm going to take a little piece of paper towel and kind of roll it, get the extra to come away, and then push it back down, and then I'll roll it on my finger here, just kind of build a nice little clean fillet, or yeah, fillet, F-I-L-L-E-T, fillet of epoxy, and call that end good, great. All right, moving on to the other side. Same rodeo over here. These ends definitely like to move around on the epoxy. So what I recommend you do, I'll be right back. 
So this is actually a tip I heard from someone else that uh, has built a Spectre, is that the epoxy, until it really starts to bite, can actually, something weird happens where it starts to slide off the end of the push rod. So I'm just going to put a little bit of masking tape on here. Like watch this. See how that slid down just a little bit? I mean it wasn't much, just a few millimeters, but it definitely slid. So I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little painter's tape here as well. And uh, get that to go. Okay, that's going to hold this in place. You're going to want to stick this aside somewhere. It will not get disturbed for 24 hours while that cures. And then you're going to want to take the two plastic uh, ball links and just set those aside somewhere uh, where you won't lose them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this mess up and then uh, clean my hands and we'll get into the tailcase. All right, so I've got my tail parts sort of laid out here all on my work surface. Now I have these sort of things kind of grouped with the screws that go with them sort of near them. So these are all the screws and pieces that'll go into the tailcase. Um, these are some of the bearings and pieces and parts that'll be in the tailcase. We've got our tail pulley here and its little pinion there. I've got our pitch slider uh, over here. And then we've got our, uh, oh, I can never remember what this guy's called, control arm of sorts. Um, I'm sure that's the wrong name, but hey, that's fine. Here, and I've gone ahead and gotten all of these screws cleaned so that we can go ahead and, you know, just work through the step in order. So I like to get everything out of the bags. Be really careful, by the way, there's some really teeny tiny uh, washers on some of these parts that uh, you got to be cautious not to lose. So I get them all out of the bags, get it all clean, all ready to go. So that's done now, so we can go ahead and dig into this. I will say, again, especially in the tail, a lot of these parts are pre loosely assembled at the factory. Be sure and take them out, clean the screws, and reassemble them with Loctite as you go through it. So I will say one of the first things they have you do in the manual is take the tail case, insert it into the tail boom, and then screw it in. And that is in fact the last thing I want to do. There's nothing more annoying as you're working on the tail that you're swinging this great big boom around your workbench and your tools and everything else are getting whacked and your boom's getting little scratches in it, which I'm fussy about. So uh, I'm going to build the whole tail in just the tail case and then until I get to a step where I feel like I absolutely need the boom, which probably won't be till the end. So I'll build all working with the tail case and then uh, we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, orient our tail case up, which is with these little nubs here uh, facing upright. So it should sit flat on the bench there. And we're going to go ahead and put this uh, bearing in our flange bearing into the inside of the tail case on the right hand side as you look at it this way. So we're going to go ahead and get some green Loctite or retaining compound on our one of our baggies here. And again, I'm going to grab the awl and I'm just going to put it on the inside here of the tail case and just sort of carefully spread it around. And I prefer to put it on the tail case versus the bearing, because if I make a mistake and get it in the wrong spot on the bearing, uh, the bearing can seize up, so that's bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and just press fit this in here, which hopefully won't be too hard. Again, if it is difficult, you're probably just misaligned. Back it out and then push it in just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and let gravity hold that that way. Push down here and just, I'm going to dab the green Loctite. See that little room? Maybe you can or can in the lights, but there's a little green ring there of stuff that sort of squeegeed out as the bearing came out. So I'm just dabbing that off. I don't want to smear it because I don't want it to get pushed into the bearing. So that is nicely seated there. So we've gone ahead and got that going. I've got our tail belt handy. I don't know how many of you have built a tail. I don't think you have to build very many helis before you find that you have built most of the tail case without the uh, tail belt inside it. So we've got this here ready to go. Uh, you have to be careful with the tail belt because it's really good at knocking screws and whatnot off of the table. And what we're going to do here is get our tail pulley uh, inserted next. So we've got our tail shaft here. Now, we have to be very careful as to the direction of our tail shaft. If I grab the awl here, you can see here 
that there are these two sort of indents where uh, a grub screw could seat and the end with it closest to the end of the shaft will be where our tail rotor sits and this end is going to engage with the set screw from our tail pulley. So we're going to go ahead and get this going here. So I'm going to kind of loosely hold it in place here and then it's going to go with our tail pulley through next. And then I'm just going to sort of stick it out the other side in an exaggerated manner. And then we've got our bearing coming in next. And I want to check which bearing because there's two. Although this one is obviously the one because this other guy here is obviously not going to fit. So that's for later in the assembly. And this bearing is going to go in here, which is going to need a little green Loctite as well. I'm just going to sort of test fit it first. And then I want to see if there's going to be any play in here. I'm just making sure that this tail pulley isn't going to bounce back and forth from side to side. And it's really not. I'm wiggling it in here before I've in done anything and inserted anything and it feels really good. So not worried about that at all. Okay, so that's great. We've done our sort of test fit. I'm going to pull the shaft out, take our pulley out here and then pop this bearing out. We're going to get some green Loctite in here for this other bearing. So again, a little dab, and then I'm just going to take that little tiny amount and work it around the inside here. Right. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a rag to the inside and just make sure I didn't accidentally get any there. And I'm actually going to take this bearing that we're going to use here and push it in from the inside out so that any green Loctite gets pushed out away from all the rotatey bits. And again, doing the same thing where I'm just dabbing to get any extra green Loctite way out of there. All right, so now, same thing. Now, again, it's really easy to put this down and then lose orientation, but the end with the dot closest to it is the end that's for your tail rotor. So we're gonna get our tail pulley in here. One last check, yeah, no play there whatsoever. Okay, so now, here's the fun part. We have to get this little grub screw here in such that through this hole here and so it lands in that flat spot on the tail pulley so you can actually look through the hole and they've done a nice job of uh, either it's just naturally occurring but either way there's a discoloration there where the little indent is darker uh, so it makes it easy to see so I'm gonna go ahead and get some red Loctite going here and I am gonna I don't care if I have to use tons of heat to get these little grub screws out, but I do care if the grub screw comes off. That's a little excessive. All right, so I'm gonna work this into this red Loctite into the grub screw. It's nice and soaked through. I'm gonna very carefully pick this up. Okay, I'm just gonna gently thread this in, hold everything steady until you get it in, and then you can send it home. And this is one of those spots it's okay to Go crazy, but use a good amount of force here. And now I've got a little bit of extra red Loctite going on in there because I went a little crazy. We'll get another piece here and we're going to use the tip of our driver to kind of hold this paper towel in there. And we're just going to clean out any of that extra red Loctite in there. I don't want that around. You can see on the tip there, just that also I'll just move some clean spots of paper towel and just wipe any of that out of there. Here, I'm curious what's going to hold this other bearing in. I suspect it's probably the tail fin, but we'll find out in just a minute. Oh, see? Look at this. I just did it. I can't believe I just did that on camera. I'm going to leave this in the video because that's classic. So, me just told you all about how to remember to put the tail pulley in, and then I didn't do it. So, Pull that out. We'll call that a dry fit to make ourselves feel better. We're going to laugh a little bit here at ourselves. And then we're going to take the tail belt, put it through. <laughs> I love it. Maybe I won't leave this in the final video, but we'll, we'll uh, release some kind of blooper. There's no way I can conceal that I just did this. It's too good. Alright, so same thing. Leave the end with 
the piece there, spin this around so we're in the right spot. And let's get that grub screw back in there. Beautiful. Hey, that's better. Look, there's a tail belt actually around the tail pulley. What a concept. All right, seriously, laughing at myself for that. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, now it's looking like a tail with a tail belt. That's crazy. All right, let's get back to work. Stop messing around. All right, so the there is this little rubber ring here that ends up being kind of a stop for our pitch slider so it doesn't uh, go too far back and, and sort of get trapped back there. I'm just gonna leave that aside for now so I don't accidentally lose it somewhere. And we're gonna skip to the next page. And yes, indeed, it is our handy dandy uh, tail fin here that is gonna hold that bearing in. And because I don't want that bearing falling out constantly, I'm gonna go ahead and install the tail fin. Normally I would hold the tail fin again until I'm done with the whole tail so I don't have to worry about it whacking about. But in this case, I should go ahead and put it there. And I'm just gonna loosely fit each screw until I get both in. Cool little tail fin. I like it. Now make sure this top hole here aligns with where our little belt retaining uh, bearings go. Now, this thing didn't go anywhere. And I can check it one last time for play. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of play in here. And this is one of those places for a real smooth operating tail you want zero play. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this uh, pinion screw again. Not pinion screw, sorry. Set screw. And I'm going to leave it in there because all I'm really going to do is pull the shaft out here and then figure out how to get this shim in here. This is where it's going to get fussy because essentially I've got to get the shim to stay right there and get this all in there and get it going. What I think I'm going to do is use my favorite tool. All i got to do is get it a little bit in and then I can get it aligned with the, uh, with the awl. I've just got to get it to make it Got to stay within sight as best as possible and get under that. But obviously I'm not making it much tighter. Oh, I think I got it. Where's my all? Here it is. All right, so I'm gonna poke it through. I've got the shim captured here as I work it between the bearings. Obviously it's much tighter now because we're adding Pretty good. Now let's see if we can get this through. There we go. All right. That can be really fussy. So now I'm going to have to take this little set screw out so I can see that it's aligned. And I think I'm going to just give another little dose of red. Just a tiny bit. So if you're counting from home, folks, that was not one, not two, but three times assembling the tail. One of those is on me. The other is on just wanting to get things just right. So, kudos to XL Power for including that shim. Um, obviously, you know, manufacturing tolerances are very good, but there is always a chance that uh, the gap will be slightly larger. And then, oh, look at that. There is no play in there now. Everything is rotating smoothly. And then... I have all, you know, no play at all. So that's great. Next, we're going to get our rear idler pulley. The bearings that will sit across here between these two nubs and hold the belt down to our tail case. All right, so looking at the manual for just a minute, you can see uh, this piece in the middle here, that's what I was talking about. This section is all pre-assembled. It's clearly been Loctited or the tolerances are such that these bearings aren't coming out. So I'm not gonna force them. You know, it does mention Loctite here, but it's just not necessary. So we're gonna take this super long bolt here. It's gonna come in from the tail fin side. And I've gone ahead and of course cleaned this already. And then it basically goes one of these little 
sort of uh, aluminum collars or spacers. And then we're going to get our giganto bearing. And then this is where it starts to get a little fussy. And then one more collar here. And this is a little tricky because it's just a tight fit to get it all in here. Twisting the screw around for whatever reason. There we go. Now I got the screw through. That's great. Okay. Now, before I put a driver on here, I'm going to get some Loctite in here. So I'm just going to use blue, and this is another great opportunity for my favorite uh, Loctite trick. So I'm going to basically just get the threads started in there, which is again, it's not quite aligned in here, so you have to kind of put a little tension on the belt. You can see here how this collar is not quite flush here, so sort of working it towards the hole. Is it tightening? It is. Just a really fine thread in there. Alright, so now I'm going to back it out some, just a little, and then I'm going to work some Loctite into the hole. So, let me take my awl, just get a good drop of Loctite in there, work it all around in all those threads. It's end up gonna get, end up getting kind of pushed out, but that's okay. Don't go crazy over tightening that, and then we'll get a paper towel and dab up the excess of the blue that popped out there. And then just check that this, well, it's really, and as you can see here, it's, this main function is to stop the belt from being able to skip off the tail pulley. And one of the cool things about this is because you're not worried about the belt is if you're a big fan of autos, you can run a looser belt tension. You don't have to go crazy um, on this helicopter with the belt tension uh, for good auto performance. If you're, you know, a more advanced pilot into harder smack and whatnot, then maybe you might want to run uh, a slightly higher belt tension. But for me, I'm going to run this one a little bit loose. Not too loose, but, you know, just right. With that, we're going to start working in some of these other parts of the tail here uh, and get uh, the rest of the case ready to accept our uh, tail rotor. Okay, looking at the manual here, you can see we've got a few sort of sub-assemblies to build before we start attaching them uh, to the helicopter. Be cautious with these, there's some little parts and screws and washers and things that are easy to lose. So uh, the first thing is we're going to take this little L-shaped piece here and get our button head M3 by six here. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is get our tail oriented in the same way that it is in the manual. So they've now got it oriented this way, uh, at least from my perspective. So, got our tail set like that. It's super reflective, which is cool, except when you're filming. <laughs> so I will try and prop this up with a driver here so that we don't get such a reflection on it. Okay, so. This little L-shaped guy here uh, gets a little uh, button head screw in it and it's going to get placed right here. So there's like a little channel for it which will keep it nice and square and we'll go ahead and get some Loctite on this guy. I think I'm going to go ahead and use just a tiny bit of red here. This is one of those screws I just don't want coming up. Single points of failure that are mission critical is where I really like to use red Loctite, so. Okay, so now we've got this piece here in our tail. The next thing is to get uh, a couple of things assembled. So we're gonna take our uh, bell crank here or the tail pitch control arms, the proper name for it, and get this assembled. So. We're going to orient this the right way so this little sort of groove saddle will face down and our ball is going to go on top. Okay, so with our pitch arm oriented the correct way, make sure you uh, put the ball in the right side. You can use some red Loctite here. There's a little sort of lip that sticks up and that's the side the ball screws into. It'll be pretty clear when you see the manual in it in person. And again, just go ahead and clean off any extra red Loctite. And you get that piece ready. And then in a second we'll be ready to join this guy with our tail pitch lever. Um, so again, let's get this oriented the same way it is in the manual. And this guy, the saddle sort of sits right over 
here, like so, and then we drop two bolts through there. I'm going to go ahead and run blue on these. There's two of them, so there's, you know, sort of backing each other up. Again, triple checking things, get everything facing the same way that it is in the manual, and then drop your bolts in. Loosely set that first guy so we get the other bolt ready, and snug both of these up nice and tight. Again, don't go crazy. You're really snugging it and then giving it just a little bit of extra pressure to make sure it's good. All right, so now this is starting to look complete here, but we still have a few more components to put together here. Um, they're actually calling for a little bit of green Loctite on these flanged bearings, but let's see. Let's give them a little push and see how easily they come out. Gently push with the driver here. Yeah, see, these aren't coming out at all on either side. So it follows my rule, not going to force it apart. So uh, no need to get any Loctite in there. We've got our two little tail pitch levers here. They each had a washer on them when I disassembled it, which is not shown in the manual. So I'm going to go ahead and put the washer back and assume it needs to be there. Get these guys ready. I'm going to use red Loctite on these guys. These are pretty darn critical. And again, they probably come with uh, the replacement parts for this. So red Loctite on the thread will end up wiping it off of every other part. So these go through with a little tip pointing in. Just kind of gently snug them up. Don't use a ton of force there. And we may have to loosen these up in a minute once we get our tail assembled and sort of see how it feels. But again, we clean up all this extra Loctite. Just looks better. I mean, most of it is not on anything mission critical, but it just looks better. All right, so this guy is looking good there. All right, so we've got our two little button head screws here that are now going to attach this to our assembly. So again, let's get things oriented just like they are in the manual. Like this long. All right, now this is where the Spectre is going to mess with your head if you haven't built one of these yet and that you have to remember that the tail push rod is on the top of the helicopter. It's up here. Right? And we may be used to, to routing this bell crank down low. It's actually going to go on the top of the helicopter. So this is going to go like such, like that. So that our, let me get our little radial bearings over here. And then, yeah, so when our, I'll tell you what, let's get the screws in and then we'll talk about it. So. I'm going to use the all trick here. I suddenly see, you know, I just don't want things sticking to bearings. So, I'm going to work some red Loctite in from both sides. Not very much. There we go. That will do the trick. All right, now back to it. So, we've got our tail control arm here. Again, it goes on top of the helicopter which is weird for those of us that have never built one this way, like me. Through the bearing. And we don't need a ton of force on these bolts, so don't go like crazy on these guys. Again, I got the Loctite inside the piece here. Go ahead and get this guy snugged up. So I'm just tightening, snugging it, and then just, just a tiny bit of pressure turn. All right, this should move like this under its own weight. Super, super freely to move. I know, it's super weird looking at this thing on top of the tail case. So let's look at it from a few different angles just to help you if you're trying to orient yourself here. Really see here. So at this point, the next thing to build is our pitch slider. Okay, we're now going to start working on the tail pitch slider assembly. So let's take a quick look at the manual there. And you can see we need to make sure we get Loctite in a couple of key places here. Uh, but when we get to our tail control links, we're going to spend a little extra time making sure they move nice and free, nothing's binding, uh, and things are really smooth. When you're working on the tail of a helicopter, you know, at every single point you want to check, you know, is everything moving, you know, super freely and easily, you know, is that, is there any binding, is there any play, and if you check it sort of along the way as you do each part, 
you'll find when the whole thing comes together and, and works in concert with each other that everything's super smooth and you know that's going to help reduce tail wag and just give you better control precision uh, in general. So working on our tail pitch slider here we've got this uh, bearing assembly and which goes through here there's a little brass collar in there that may take a little bit of alignment to get and make sure these bearings are all sort of pressed well together and then we're going to want to get some Loctite on these brass threads here before we slide on this uh, sort of control uh, link collar here. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to use some blue here and I'm just going to sort of paint it with my awl around the threads here. If a manual that doesn't say it on you know all the other pages where things are really important says this is really important, it's probably really important. So definitely do that. Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and thread this on here to our Loctite. Now you can see there's a couple of flats here, so what we're going to do is just grab uh, an adjustable wrench here and just gently get it in there and just finger tighten this. Now I'm going to go crazy against that. And then the Loctite will do its thing and this will be a nice solid assembly. So that part's done. Now here's the part where we're going to get really fussy about making sure things are moving freely. So these little teeny tiny brass uh, pieces here go inside this hole, the small hole on the dog bones, which the actual name is the pitch snow. The actual name for these is the tail control link. It's funny, I, I, I don't realize sometimes how often I make up names for these things, like the dog bones. There's actually legitimate names for these things. So be careful, these brass bushings do like to fall out. And let's take a closer look at the dog bones. Is there a marking? There is. There's a number one on one side of these. And we're going to want to make sure these are facing in opposite directions from each other. If you think about the way the tail control slides on with the ball links on kind of opposite sides, we've got to make sure that these two uh, dog bones or tail control links are, you know, facing opposite. If they're facing the same way, then they can't interface with the tail. They need to be opposite. So um, if you stare really closely at these in just the right light, you can see that there is, and you won't be able to see this on camera for sure because I can barely see it in reality, a little number one on one side. All right, so we're gonna make, and let's just actually just do this now. This is not showing me the number one side, and this one is showing me the number one side. So now I know these are opposite each other. And we can always fix this later if we need to, but if we get it wrong, because it is really hard to see. So now what we're gonna do is go with, get these two little bolts in there, and we're gonna go ahead and get some Loctite in the threads that will receive this bolt. And again, if this thing dies, the whole thing dies. So I'm gonna go ahead and use red Loctite here. So the first bolt will come in from the top, which means I want the Loctite in the bottom portion here. Which means I wanna get the collar. Only one side of these is threaded, so you gotta sort of stare at it and figure out which of the threads it's this way. Right, and I'm probably going to put just a tiny bit on the actual tip of the bolt as well, just to make sure that it's in those threads too. Do not want this guy coming up. All right, so we got the bolt prepped. Now we get our dog bone in. So this side here does not have the number one showing. You're trying to work that brass collar into position here. And this is another good use of the awl, by the way, is you can poke it right through this collar, try and get things aligned, and it'll do a good job of that. And then we'll get our bolt through here, and I'm just going to gently snug this. Now, this dog bone here should move nice and freely, and this is not, it's not bad. And I feel like I could probably roll with this and it would, it would bed in okay, but I think it can be better. So, I'm going to Pop this out again. All right, so this is 300 grit sandpaper. And what I'm gonna do is just gently sand this part. And I'm gonna leave the little brass bushing in there and just kinda 
take a little off and I'm going to go really slow and we'll test fit in between. And I'm going to take just a little bit off of each side. Because all it takes is a tiny amount to get these things to move a little more free. You don't have to go crazy here. And you definitely do not want to remove a lot of material. That's why I'm using 300 grit. It's not taking off a lot at a time. All right, let's make sure we've got our threads still facing down. Yep. We'll try and slide this in. And it slid in a little easier that time for sure. But it's still quite a bit of friction. All right, this time I'm going to take the brass bushing, pop that out, and then just sand the plastic part. And just for giggles, let's fit this without the plastic part and see how it feels. All right, so that feels good. Okay, so that's good. All right, so again, let me make sure I have this one. All right, threads are on the bottom. That's correct. Let's get the brass bushing back in here. Always fun. Okay, that's pressed in. And then let's fit it back in here. Make sure all through to just help align things. Take our bolt. I'm just going to put a little bit of fresh Loctite on the tip. Again, not going to, you know, crank this down. Just snug that up and let the Loctite do its thing and then feel this again. Ideally, I want these to flop around, but it feels like the friction is not... It's on the brass bushing itself. So, I'm just doing this by hand, and what I've got is a three millimeter drill bit just in here. And I'm not really removing any material at all, maybe just smoothing out a few burrs. So, I'm just working this back and forth a little bit. Again, just by hand. And we'll see if that helps smooth things out a little bit. Definitely got the bolt going through the right way here. All right, here we go. Big money. No whammies. If you remember that game show, you're as old as I am. Congratulations. Oh yeah, that's much better. So that, just spinning that drill bit in there, you know, maybe there was a little, you know, molding flash or something in there, but you know, that was, that was all it took. Now this dog bone is moving really well. So I'm just going to go ahead and proactively do that. So this other guy, I'm going to push the bushing out, take that three millimeter bit, I don't even know if I really needed to sand it. It might have just been as simple as spinning the bit. Do that. All right, we'll put the bit away now. That's all it takes. It was probably just a minuscule amount just for giggles. I'm going to just give a little sanding here so that maybe I can just put this in once and be done. All right, so on this case here now, we want the number one. If we look at the manual, yeah, we want our number one to be facing up so that it's opposite the other side. And it is, and our bolt is going to go the other way. It's going to come up from the bottom here. Let's get our brass uh, bushing back in there. That's in there. And then we need to get some Loctite on our bolt and in the threads. So, all right, did we? Oh, yeah, this feels just as good. Awesome. So the, really, that was all it take was just taking out a little of the molding flash inside there. And then, you know, you can see if I jiggle this around, these are moving pretty pretty darn easily. This is good to go. I like it. All right, moving on. We can now just strap this into here. So the way this works is we take our pitch slider here and then these little, uh, these little bolts here that stick through with these nice smooth nubs what ride in this channel in our tail pitch slider. So if we slide that on and then you seat this piece in there as it goes by and then just check this whole thing. This movement here should feel butter smooth and it does. This is uh, this makes me feel excited honestly like if you get to this point in a tail and, and everything feels this slick oops that went too far uh, it's a very good sign. But now we can take this guy here we can actually throw the boom on it at this point. Go, oh, you know what we forgot? This little rubber, little grommet, not grommet, uh, rubber washer just goes right on the tail shaft. And you just sort of push it all the way down against the bearing and then your pitch slider goes back on. And then this stops. It just gives a soft stop for the pitch slider when it, when it hits there and it stops it from going so far that uh, it can't lock at all. So, great, we got that. We're gonna go ahead and straighten out our belt. Try and get all the twists out of it. 
Again, if we develop a twist, these, these, the nice thing about these big fat booms is you can literally look right down them um, and, uh, and grab it. String, always handy. Just run it straight down the boom. Just gonna take the tail belt here, go right down to the end, tie a little half hitch in here. That's really all it takes. Pull this through the boom now, pull it through. And voila, our tail belt is sticking out the other side. Now, I'm not all that fussed about orientation of the belt at this point. Uh, the nice thing about these giganto booms is that you can uh, sight through them. You literally see enough daylight in them that you can uh, get this the nice way. Now, now that this thing is getting a little longer, we have to start taking extra care to not ding it, which, you know, will not make it unflyable. It'll just make it you know, cosmetically dinged up right out of the gate. That's no fun. So, got our four bolts here. We're gonna use blue Loctite on these guys. Don't over tighten these. The aluminum will uh, malform, is that a word? Malform? Snug them, give them just a tiny bit, a little extra extra from there, and then call that good. Don't then flip this over to the other side. And then let's see if we can sight down the boom and get the twist out. Oh, the twist is already out. So, wow, it's really easy to look down this boom. It would be impossible for me to show you on camera, but I'm just gonna give you this weird, awkward looking shot of my face looking down the boom. But this is now correct. I'm just gonna take this fine looking piece of hardware and set it aside behind me. And now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get us set up. Um, start by just opening the bag for our tail rotor here. And again, this is just loosely assembled. We're gonna take this whole thing apart, clean all the bolts, and uh, find all the thrust washers and get our grease out and all that good stuff. Uh, get this little set screw out and uh, put this whole thing together. But uh, I'll go ahead and get it stripped apart and then we'll come back and uh, have at it. It's time to build the tail rotor. So let's take a quick look at the manual first and this is an area I feel like there's a little bit of room for improvement here in terms of just making things more clear. I always want one location, one exploded diagram, all the way left to right, every single washer and whatnot. Um, and you can certainly, all that information's here, so there's nothing too wrong with this. But you can see we've got our palm dampers, which are those sort of hard plastic-like material, uh, in our tail rotor hub and you can see the layout of the various washers. Nothing, you know, particularly unusual here. So what I've gone ahead and done, and this is also, you know, sort of pre-assembled this way, is uh, laid out all of the components in order. So let's just sort of talk through it. So um, these are our tail rotor blade grips, and then this is our hub. The palm dampeners are inside the hub here. You can see the sort of black uh, circle here is our palm dampener. There is a little set screw here uh, that will go right here that helps adhere this uh, the hub to the tail rotor shaft. Um, and then we've got a couple of washers here that'll go in between the blade grip and the hub. So this is kind of the, the main line of the rotor and then these lines of washers are what will go inside. So already inside the end of each blade grip is a radial bearing. So we will uh, insert a second one, followed by this uh, sort of narrow washer here, and then we've got our thrust bearing. Uh, and with all thrust bearings, the larger inside diameter is always gonna go closest to the main rotor hub. And the way to identify that is grab your tail rotor shaft, put the thrust bearing halves on it, and then rock them. See how much movement there is there? That is the larger inside diameter, and if we take the other one and we rock it, you can see there's way less wiggle here. That means it's the smaller inside diameter, and therefore it goes closest to the tail blade. And same thing in the main rotor. The, you know, the narrow inside diameter goes closest to the main blade, and the you know, bigger inside diameter goes closer to the hub. So these are all laid out. So the only thing peculiar I found here is that we have these two extra very thin washers not called for in the manual. So I suspect what these are is these are shims. If we put the whole thing together and there's too much play in the head, we can insert these shims here and here. Uh, 
and uh, be able to remove that play. But they're not even mentioned in the manual, which I find peculiar. So I'm going to build the head initially without them, and then we'll see if there's too much play there, if, if I can, you know, tighten down, uh, you know, both blades into our feathering shaft here and uh, it's not good enough, then I'll go ahead and insert those shims, which shouldn't be too difficult. So, uh, do make sure you definitely clean these two bolts. It's the only thing that's uh, stopping your tail blade launching off into, well, hopefully just the grass and not a person, um, but you'll certainly lose the heli uh, and probably have a gnarly crash. So, first things first, I'm gonna take these uh, ball links, not ball links, but uh, the balls, servo balls, and uh, red Loctite them into the blade grips. So then use like so. Again, snug it up, tighten it up, clean up any extra Loctite. Do the same thing on the other side. I do find that laying out all of my washers and whatnot in order is extremely helpful. Um, it just stops you from Asking questions in the middle of assembly when your fingers are covered in grease and whatnot, you know exactly what you're doing and the order you're going in. Speaking of grease, I'm going to go ahead and add some around the palm dampeners and I'm just going to push it into uh, and around here, work it kind of. And I'll do the same thing on the other side, get a little grease on these palm dampeners as well, and then press them in. The good thing is, is this grease will help keep these palm dampeners in place while we are mucking about here. Clean up the whole thing, and then we're also going to take out with tool here any grease on the sort of, at least any excess grease kind of in the middle here so that when we push our feathering shaft through, what we don't want is lots of grease getting inside the threads on the end. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get one blade grip going. So the way I do this is I work from the outside in and I build it onto a driver that I'll then slide things in. So I'm going to take my, uh, and I will tell you there's actually a little tiny washer on the end of these feathering shaft screws. So that washer is there if you're looking for it and see it in the plans. It's just tiny so I kept it on the end of the screw so I can uh, find it. So. We're going to work from outside to inside. So we take our thrust washer and we get a decent amount of grease on there and then slide that. Now, we are at the cup washer part of the thrust bearing. And much like when we built the main head, we're gonna pack this full of grease and then we run these the same direction on both sides. I'm going to run the cup out towards the blade grip. So, goes there. And I like to just make sure I got plenty of grease on all these guys. So, I'd rather have tons of it on my fingers at the end, as long as these are all working well together. Alright, so that's our thrust washers. And then we're going to wipe some of the excess grease off here on a paper towel. Now that those are well greased, and then this sort of tiny ring shaped washer goes in and then our radial bearing and then kind of get everything evened up so now we've got this stack and so we've already got our other radial bearing in here we're gonna slide this in to the blade grip and take your time here when you get it perfectly aligned it'll go but at first it'll feel fussy and it, it won't want to go necessarily the you know you kind of can get the radial started and then follow with the others, but it's a little tricky. And of course you got grease on your fingers and the whole thing's just fussy. But go slow and you'll get it. There we go, there's the radial in. And then getting that sort of skinny washer in is a little tricky too. Just go slow. You don't want to bend that little skinny thing. Cause then you'll have to wait for a new one to arrive because you definitely don't have one of those sitting in your workshop. Unless you're a better man than I am. Which I'm sure a lot of you are. And there we go. We got them all in. So see, patience just pays off. And then I'm actually going to use the nice thing about these MIP drivers, this little black part here. 
does a great job of just pushing all those washers down. So, pull the tool out, stick that over there, and we're going to leave this right here waiting to go. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the other side. We will do the exact same thing on the other side to get this blade group going. We're going to work from the outside in. Beautiful. All right. Wipe some grease off our fingers. We'll keep doing that. Now we can start assembling things. So, first thing we're going to do is take our feathering shaft and slide it through our head block, which is pretty simple to do. Now, when you do that, you may get a little bit of grease in the threads. And I take my awl and I just pick it out. Because grease will definitely stop the threads from being effective, and then you can also take a little paper towel and kind of work it out. And we'll probably do this as well once we slide the blade grip on as well. All right, so now we're going to take our washer that goes between the hub and the blade grip and slide that on. And then we're going to take our blade grips and ever so gently slide the shaft through. And you can see, maybe you can, that it's sort of pushed one of the washers up a little bit. I'm just going to tap that back down with the awl there. And then we're going to take our feathering shaft screw, get some Loctite on that, and get it in. Alright, and then we're going to very carefully lift this up and get this guy screwed into the end of the feathering shaft. Now, you're not going to tighten it that much right now. Really, we're just trying to stop things falling apart because as soon as you start to snug it up, you're going to start losing uh, parts of this. So, now we're going to do the other side. So, same thing. Let's take our little washer and put that on next. And then we're going to slide the blade grip down over here. Beautiful. I'm just going to push the washer down around this. Pull out any grease that got in there, which didn't look like much. And then same thing with some Loctite here. Again, I've already got the little tiny washer is in here already. So it's on the screw. It's going to go in this way here. And then same thing once we get this a little tight. It's not going to do us any good. Right there. Alright, so now I'm going to grab another 3mm driver here and then we're going to counter tighten this against each other. And here's where we're going to find out if we're going to need those other two shims because we're going to get that nice and tight and then let's see how this feels. So it certainly spins freely. So the next test is to pop it in and out this way. Right. There shouldn't be a lot of play there. But there is a little. I'm inclined to add these shims, to be honest with you. So, now we got to break one side. Oh, disassemble this. So, same thing in reverse. We're going to put a driver in each side. And now we're going counter opposite. One side will pop, the other will not. That's okay, we only need one side to come out. So we'll hold the driver in the other side. Pop this one out. Now, our little teeny tiny washer stayed in the blade grip, so let's remember this, okay? Because we're going to have to fig figure this out. Alright, so we're going to just gently pull the blade grip off. Something's stopping it from coming off. There it goes, just a little friction. So I've still left the little washer in there. And now I'm going to push the... Still got a driver in this side of the feathering shaft to hold it. I've still got the big washer here. I'm going to take the little washer and insert it close to the hub. So it'll be in that position. Put the hub back on. Come on. Alright, so the hub is back on now. I'm going to add the little teeny tiny shim, the extra washer. And then the other washer is actually still stuck to the blade grip, so we'll just do that. And then now we've got to work all this through. Now again, that little teeny tiny washer was hanging out on the end here. Get my screw here. 
through the teeny tiny washer into the feathering shaft. There we go. See, that wasn't so bad to redo. But let's see how it works. Okay, so now I got everything in place. I'm going to go ahead and counter tighten these bolts, pull the drivers out. Okay, still moving smoothly, so that's great. How's the play? Zero play. So, is this just the case that the manual needs to indicate those extra shims need to go in there? Or maybe this is one of those tolerance deals, but either way, definitely check it out. If you can, like, pull on this and it's popping in and out, in and out, in and out, a noticeable amount, and it doesn't have to be a lot, because those shims are narrow as can be, um, go ahead and do it. It'll be worth it. So, with that, our head is good to go. I'm going to go ahead and clean this grub screw, and then we can put our tail rotor together. Clean. All right, I'm going to use red Loctite on this guy, and now we're going to have to bring our tail back. So, let's go kind of one step at a time here. Let's get our pitch slider in. So that's back in there. We've got our flat spot here. This little darker spot is where that little grub screw needs to sit home. And so I'll splay these out this way. I'm going to go ahead and get some red Loctite going on this set screw. Just start tightening it. Back it out. Okay, so now, this is going to be kind of hard to show on camera, but what we're going to do is line this up and stare through it such that we see the flat spot right through the hole. Because we want that this set screw right here, we want to drive right into that recess, just like we did with the tail pulley. And that's what's going to hold this thing on. And, okay. So now that I feel it and it's gripped, I'm going to lay this flat so now I can get a little more leverage here without worrying about snapping the tail fin. And just go ahead and send that home. Alright, take that out. And then we're going to clean up any extra Loctite that kind of dribbled out there from the set screw. Don't want any of that working its way into the blade grip and gumming up the works. Alright, so we got that going. Now, moment of truth. Clean your fingers off before you gum up the boom with grease. We've got to go ahead and get our dog bones attached to our ball links. Alright, so now that we've figured out that the... I'll tell you in a second, let me get this one on, and then I'll tell you which way the one goes. Because I can just, you can sort of see visually which way it needs to go by looking for which is the smaller hole. Ooh, that feels good. That's a good sign. So, and then the other one is always a little bit trickier to get on. you got to kind of get it around the grip. Here, here we go. And then, I'll try that on that way. Oh, yeah. That looks good. All right, so, the side with the one is the outside of the ball link. So, the... The number goes to the outside, which is typical. Usually it'd be a logo in the case of SAB stuff. And then let's just play with the tail, see how it feels. This should move really smoothly. Not gum up at, at no point should you feel like it takes too much force. But this feels great. That spins well. Uh, I, can, I can very easily do it from the grip end. With that, we have ourselves a nicely moving tail. I like it. We can set this aside. We got some more work to do on the fuselage. A couple more servos to throw in from the other day. And uh, we'll be good to go. So with that, thanks for watching. Uh, this concludes episode four, our uh, tail and boom assembly. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode where we'll dig into uh, finishing up the fuselage and uh, get us to a place where we can start uh, adding in electronics. All right, with that, I'm Nick Wisdom, and this is Hack TV. Thanks for watching.